Hey, Fitheads. Today we have Matt and Nicole Burke. They are a couple. They are also CrossFitters, and he trains her, which is super cool. She's an insanely high level competing athlete, like gunning for the games, which they opened up and talked about. It's so cool. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I mean, we talked a lot about CrossFit, yeah. CrossFit training, the short, medium, long workouts. The balance of that was crazy. That was like, yeah, I yeah. think the he first time the I've heard anybody talk about that. Yeah. In, in terms of balance. Yeah, it's a little more. bit counter to what I thought I knew about CrossFit. So it was cool to hear his side of that. And then also hear about her transition from being like a ballerina to now freaking machine. It, it, yeah, it was, it was awesome getting to pick that brain. Welcome to Total Fitness. Serious fitness for not so serious people. Welcome, Matt and Nicole. We're so glad to have you. Thank you for having us. The awesome. dynamic duo of CrossFit, <laughs> which clearly everyone calls you that, right? Hopefully. <laughs> one day. One day we'll get there. How did you two get started working together? Take it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Cover your eyes and then point to the person that gets angry yeah, about right. dinner more. <laughs> Right. Well, we both kind of started CrossFit at the same time. I was finishing up my nursing degree and he was finishing up his master's. And um, it was like Christmas break. We went home. Uh, we were just friends, knew each other uh, through some mutual friends and then um, kind of started getting to know each other, I guess, a little bit more. We started dating and then eventually got married. Um, and then about, I guess, three years into CrossFit, mm -hmm. we decided to like take on the coach athlete role as well. So um, we've been doing that for now two years. Mm -hmm. And so he programs everything that I do and coaches me through it every day. Um, so he wears lots of hats in our relationship. <laughs> That's yeah. gonna be a crazy dynamic. Like I can't imagine. It, it started with the relationship and then became like also working together, coaching thing. I, I'm surprised. I thought it was like I would have guessed the other way around. No, it. Uh, I think we were both really early on. I think we were just, I mean, friends and dating. So that we had that training partner kind of relationship where we're just around each other and we kind of knew each other from a training side of it. Uh, on top of just having a relationship. And then just kind of things, I think, evolved naturally. So uh, the coaching role started to evolve more for me. And I really enjoy that. And I really enjoy um, that the finesse of good programming. And, you know, and it's really hard to be competitive in CrossFit. So it was <laughs> like trying to compete and uh, be successful at it. I was finding that it's not as simple as some people make it look on TV. So, uh, you know, you, you try, you try, you try, you try, and you're just like, man, this is, I don't know, uh, you know, how much effort do you want? And then all the while you have this awesome gem of an athlete that's mm -hmm. just like starting to come into her own. And I think I want, well, at one point we had the same coach and um, I guess we could go back even further than that. But at one point we had the same coach. So we, we're able to just kind of help each other out when he would give me a certain workout, he would give her a certain workout. We could kind of help each other out. Like, how would you attack this? Or how would you do this? So, I mean, over the course of those first three years, you kind of just get to know everything about each other from, from the athlete standpoint. And then eventually just kind of turned into like, Hey, you're kind of good at programming and you know, my strengths and weaknesses. Why don't you, try it for me, you know? And so I was like, well, yeah, that makes sense. Let's just make sure that, you know, we have good communication. So we really just put everything out in front, like, Hey, you can't take anything personal when I say one thing or program <laughs> one thing. And you know, it's, it's, I love you. It's not, I want to see you suffer. And, but the <laughs> other part of it is like, I don't want her to suffer, but I know she needs to. And I'm like, Oh, here we go. And, uh, so we've, we've had that clear understanding. I think if we tried that at the beginning of our relationship, I don't know how mature we would have been able to do it. So <laughs> full maturation of, of sport and just 
our marriage as well. So it's good. I think it, everything, again, times out when it's supposed to. And I think we, we wait well beyond like when we're ready. We just like really want to make sure everything is good. And then it's like, okay, let's take this one small step. All right, let's, let's make sure we're good here. Okay. We'll take one more small step mm-hmm. and just kind of keep working that. And at the end of five years, you kind of see where we're at now. Dang. Yeah. That sounds so exceptionally well adjusted. <laughs> Come on, we need drama. This is a show. <laughs> There's been lots of fun as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, we can dive into that. Um, <laughs> I just can't imagine, like, my trainer also knowing everything I have for dinner every night and, like, how much I sleep and recover and when I'm waking yeah. up, like, every aspect of your life. You know, you know he's looking, right, Nicole? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, I, thankfully I don't need a whole lot of like, uh, motivation or, um, outside discipline or anything. Like I'm pretty self-motivated and definitely, um, love being self-disciplined because I feel like, uh, you know, I, I'm in control of everything that I do. So I can, I can be the reason I make it or break it or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and he just kind of gives me the, the map quest and the push when I need it. So mm-hmm. yeah, she, the map quest reference. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, yeah, that's one thing whenever, you know, especially when you meet new people or like, so I coach a, uh, versus and they're like, so do you, do you compete as well? I'm like, absolutely not because I don't have this plan. Like there's no way. Um, she's so regimented on knowing how much sleep she needs. She doesn't need outside help on like, Hey, don't make bad choices this weekend. You know, it's like, she's going to eat right and drink right and sleep right and recover right and make sure she gets her work done. And, you know, so none of that, um, has ever been put on me. Like she doesn't need that at all. So, um, I strictly focus on the programming part and I think that's a big separator too, why she's so much more successful is like I don't have the mental fortitude to like okay we're gonna grind for four months leading up to this competition I'm like I want to eat a burger way more (laughs) times but um so I mean I think that's always a big separator between someone who's successful um in that sport is having that discipline because that's I think you can train it but it's really hard to like ask someone like, Hey, help me become more disciplined. Eventually you just got to make that decision on your own. And she's never had that. At least she's never brought to me, had that issue of being disciplined. And then it's even more so if you're a couple, because then you're like, do, do I also have to be disciplined? I'm not signing up for that. I'm I'm good. I'm fine. (laughs) It's hard if you're living with someone that like eats junk food, it's hard to stay like, uh, like super focused, but she's so good about like, he, eats clean with me he doesn't complain he's not let's go out to eat like it's only if i bring it up like okay i really want some ice cream (laughs) like can we get and that's like like a that's like a big ping like yes (laughs) (laughs) what a coincidence yes i've been thinking about this for days (laughs) yeah um but i mean like the difference is though like we we eat the same foods but you know she's measuring it for performance and i'm just kind of like Looks, looks good on my plate. I'm going to eat it, you know? I'm not, I'm not, so uh, I was picturing you out like, uh, like sneaking a cigarette only you're like sneaking a, like a hot dog outside. <laughs> <Bigger> <laughs> <bar>. <laughs> Every once in a while I'll get in the car and there's like a wrapper. Yeah. Of, like, <laughs> like, a, like, hey, I'm going to go to the must have broken into my car and <laughs> eaten a double Whopper. I don't know what happened. <laughs> hey, tough part of town. Better move, you know? Oh, you need some more protein and you're out of fruit. Okay, let me go to the store. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, I deserve this. You did so good. It's <laughs> great job training <laughs> well Nicole what do you think makes you so internally driven is this like genetics or like I'm sure people ask you all the time like what gives you this mental fortitude what separates you from someone like Matt who doesn't have it <laughs> yeah but I don't know that you don't have it. it that's a great question um it's honestly something I don't know that I necessarily developed it was something I feel like I just always kind of had mm. I was always driven um to be the best so like growing up 
I did ballet and ballet isn't competitive. The only thing that you're really competing for is to get like a certain spot in the program or whatever you're doing. It's very like, uh, we're all working together. We're making this big production. You know, it's not me against you, me versus you down to the line. So throughout that, even though it wasn't competitive, I still made it competitive. Like I wanted to get the most <laughs> from, from my instructor. I wanted to get like the spotlight. I wanted her always talking about me, using me as an example. Like I wanted to be the most flexible. I wanted to be able to do, you know, a triple or something like, like I just wanted to be the best one in the class. And um, that's just kind of like where it started. But uh, definitely my parents probably had a lot to do with it too. My dad was always expecting in a great way, always expecting the best from me or my best effort in anything that I did. He was very um, disciplinary whenever I was growing up. We were, uh, he was really strict. You know, I had lots of rules growing up and um, l the little things like bed must be made, clothes must be washed, house must be cleaned um, before you do anything. And that was just teaching me like life skills, <laughs> just trying to like get me ready to uh, like live a productive life. Um, but I think the majority of like the intuitive drivenness was just something maybe I just kind of had and then tapped into um, as I kind of grew up and then into this athletic career. Yeah, I can see if you want to be the best, like in ballet, it's like, yeah, I want all those things. Then you also have to realize it takes a lot of work and no one's even like expecting that. So it's like, you have to go and do that work on your own so you can prove that you're the best. And I mean, having that discipline, you know, growing up, it just, it prepares you that you're on your own when it's your house and when it's um, your bed and your, you know, you want all that clean now, but that's just, learning how to rely on yourself. I think that's where a lot of the internal drive comes from her. When she transferred into CrossFit, it was like, oh, okay. I, I just work really hard and nail this routine. Like that's, I know how this works. I've done this before. Like I get that. So I just got to put in the work and it's probably going to be putting in the work when no one else wants to put in the work. And um, I think having that solitude in ballet where it's like, I'm just grinding in front of, or like in the room trying to nail this routine, it, I can only depend on myself. Like no one else is going to do that routine for me. No one else is going to put in the hours on an erg for me. So I just have to go do it. So um, that's how I always think with her when she talks about that ballet background, I'm just like, gosh, it's so much discipline to do well in that. But like you grew up playing baseball or football like me, it's just like, oh, you're hanging out with your buddies and we'll just see like, yeah, you throw it, if you drop it, that's okay. Like, we'll go do it again. Like, there's hard work involved, but it's different when it's a team sport compared to, like, an individual discipline, I think, so. Yeah, the little level of competitiveness just to be a ballerina. I mean, talk to me about the transition from being long and lean to no longer worried about getting bulky. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's awesome, an awesome question. So, um, whenever I was 18, um, this, that was my last year in ballet and I had the opportunity to, um, perform in, uh, Belgium with a family that has a ballet company over there or, uh, go to college. And at the time I was like really, um, gun ho on going to med school. Like I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to work in the emergency room. And I was like, you know, if I put off this one year, that's like one less year, I'm going to be so old. Whenever I was 18, I was just really dumb. So anyway, gave up ballet. I was like, I'm not doing it forever. I'm done. Um, and then went to college and like most girls my age at that time, it was like skinny is the way to be like, just don't eat. started running. All of my ballerina dancer friends started doing marathons after we stopped dancing. Right. Yeah, that's, <laughs> a, 
That's a good point because I actually did do a couple of half marathons and I, I hate Called it. it. <laughs> I hated every second of it. I was I'm I'm still not a great runner, but like I hated it. Um and I don't know. I wasn't necessarily always like I just didn't want to be get fat, you know. <laughs> I didn't really care about being like super skinny whenever I first started CrossFit, but I just didn't want to get fat. And um the transition I guess started through social media and finding these people or like watching um this girl named Andrea Ager, which I don't even think that's her name anymore. I think she's married. <laughs> I don't think she does CrossFit anymore. I'm not really sure, but like seeing her on a regional floor and like super cut. And I was like, man, like, I want to be like that. I want to look like that. And I think I remember like showing that, like, I want to look like that. And he was like, well, your arms need to get a lot bigger. <laughs> like, okay, thanks. Got He's it. Like, okay. I'm going to just get my laser pointer here. Rita. Yeah, it was, it was like a seamless transition in my brain of like, I want to be just like that. Like there was no, I don't want to be bulky situation. I always just wanted to look like the girls that I saw on Instagram and Facebook um, because I thought they were just badass. And I was like, that's going to be me one day. (laughs) Yeah, this is a great argument for representation. All right, more CrossFit women, take pictures of yourself and put it on social media because we need it. (laughs) Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely went through that phase of like, I don't want the scale to have three numbers on it. You know, I was definitely there. I've been there before and it was super unhealthy in all aspects. I mean, from mental health, physical health, everything was just terrible. Um, And then as soon as you get that inspiration, it's like a, a light switch. It just clicks and you're like, oh, it doesn't really matter about the number. It just matters, you know, what you're doing and, and how healthy your lifestyle is. Yeah, we talk about that a lot, how how the scale is like one of the worst ways to judge your body or yourself or your friend's body or whatever, like the amount you weigh. And, and especially, I think it's cool with social media because you see two people or sometimes you see like the same person and then they're like, I'm the same weight in both of these pictures. We had somebody on a while ago who's doing some bodybuilding stuff. And he's like, I'm literally the same weight and it's just night and day. Like you can be so much more shredded or cut or whatever or you just be like a big blob <laughs> yeah. i mean it's it's a tool and i mean it's it's a tool like in some cases i think a scale can be helpful um but to say it's the end all be all yeah. def- defining your existence is this number then that's getting kind of silly because we don't do that with really much anything else it's like Oh, I measured your height and you're five ten. You're like, oh, that's it. I'm done. You know, it's like, it doesn't work that way. It's like, yeah, but you have a real good personality and you know, you know, whatever. So yeah. like, it's okay. Uh, I think like even for us, like we, I like to use a scale just to kind of see just like, oh, where am I at? You know, but it's again, I don't let it kind of define or dictate what I'm doing, I'll let my lifestyle choices go with that. But well, that's not true. Because sometimes true. Yeah. he'll get on a scale and he's like, oh, I'm three pounds under. And he goes and like hammers some <laughs> peanut butter and honey. <laughs> it it gives me like, eating. Yes, I get to slam some food today. I'm excited. So it's love that. Yeah. Oh, that's so but then when it's heavy, like let's just say, let's just say like I've decided that I think that like 205 pounds is kind of like the sweet spot. I've tried to gain weight just to see what happens. It's like, it's a lot of work to try to gain weight. And I've also seen when I'm not taking care of myself, my weight drops. And so that's where I like to see the scale come in handy. It's like, Ooh, you're kind of getting, you're getting low. That also means I'm not taking care of myself. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. working too much or not sleeping enough. I'm stressing a lot. And so I'm, that's when it's like, okay, you need to take a break and try to figure out how to get that number back up a little bit. Um, so I think in that case, the scale kind of keeps me accountable on that. But if my goals shift or if even if like if anyone's goal shifts, you can kind of say, okay, this is where I'm at. All right. Gained a pound. All right, cool. If that's what you want to do, then great. You're trending in a good direction if that's what you want to do. Um, so that's where I think I'll use the scale more so. But yeah, if it is under, then that means late night, <laughs> peanut butter, honey, <laughs> a gallon of milk right in front of the TV. And we're just, we're just, yeah, 
It's disgusting. But it, <laughs> you get up. She me and oh. she still loves me for it, and it's okay. So we're all right. <laughs> Well, here's a great example of using the skill. Nicole, you and I weigh the same and actually are the same height. So clearly we're the same level of athlete based on the scale. <laughs> How much, what's the most you've ever back squatted? Um, 295. 295. And I, weighing the same as you, being the same level of athlete, have back squatted 185. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And that's, like, that's the first thing though. We're like, that's awesome. Because I mean, it, it goes back to, well, what, what's your goals, Allie? Are you, are you trying to make it across the games? My goal is to beat Nicole. I'm working okay. on it. Okay. Well, <laughs> good luck. No, she's going to be riding solo for a while. Allie's going to be in the weight room. Uh, it's also funny. You're like in a direct example of so we just talked to Nate Lazinski, the chiropractor. Yes. You know him because he, he was a CrossFit Delphi. And he was like, ballerinas wreck their body. Like, I just always thought they were incredible athletes. But he's like, they move their bodies in exactly the wrong way. And then CrossFitters are the opposite of that and choose to move in the most functional way. Um, and you have done both. Like, do you feel like now that you have more control or that you have a healthier body or that you just move in a better way than when you were doing ballet? Um, I think that, um, yeah, I mean, well, I agree with him that they, that ballerinas do have some non-functional movements of their body, but <laughs> I, I think like more so it's just the fueling. So like having proper nutrition just makes my body feel so much mm. better. Um, and developing like ballerinas have the most incredible core strength of anyone like that. I mean, I would just go out on a limb and say like their core strength is incredible. Um, as, and so I guess, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know what I'm trying to say, but I, I think that more so than like the movements, I think it's more of like the nutrition. So like the ballerinas are just going to go smoke a cigarette instead of eat dinner. That's cool. I mean, that is the culture yeah, around ballet, around theater. <laughs> but like, you know, CrossFit, we encourage the, the healthy meals, the healthy nutrition, and all of that goes into like gliding the muscles and joints and like making that feel better. And, and that's, I think, what people don't realize. So you, like, how much are you eating and how often throughout the day then? <laughs> it changes a lot, especially like right now, I don't have a competition on the horizon. So I'm kind of like a little looser with um, my food. I still track everything that I eat, but if I want something like pizza, like we had, we, we made pizza last night, then I'm going to eat it. Whereas if I was, you know, getting ready for a competition in a few weeks or like a month or so, I would definitely be a lot more um, strict but typically my days are around 2,500 calories. Um, I usually eat a big breakfast around 11. I try to wake up and do a cardio session without eating and get a little work done and then eat a breakfast that is big enough for breakfast and lunch. Um, and cardio, you doing pre-workout? Yeah. Uh, just coffee, like caffeine. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I guess it's not technically fasted cardio, but I just don't eat. No, that counts if it's just caffeine and you don't like put anything on in it. Well, there's oat milk involved. Okay. I don't drink black coffee. I'm sure it's you not burn fasted. That off I just minute. don't eat. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, I drink calories. <laughs> um, yeah, so I eat like a big breakfast. It counts for lunch too. It's like very large. The calorie amounts usually around 900 to 1000 calories. Um, and then usually we'll have my second training session, have a protein shake, um, and a snack that involves lots of carbs, a bagel, some cereal, something along those lines, and then have a big dinner. So it just depends really on the time of year. Dang, two a days. And that's usual for you? Yeah. Um, well, we just actually decked out our garage yeah we're in it right now it's so nice. 
we've been working hard to try to create oh. like, oh. how you can um, <laughs> train at home. And uh, Nicole's work requires her to be by her computer a lot and also be on on call. And so it makes it hard for her just like, okay, we're going to do a four hour block at the gym today, you know, and it's like the gym has classes going on all day and we're really trying hard not to interrupt anything that's going on with that. And so the middle day is kind of what's open, but it's also kind of when her job is the most busy. So Mm -hmm. um, that was one of our goals when we moved here was really just um, not rely on the, the home gym, but it's there when we need it. And it makes things very convenient for her. Um, and not feeling stressed about like taking the 30 minutes to get up to the gym and 30 minutes to prep. Okay. There's an hour and we still haven't done anything yet when she can just kind of mobilize and all right, you got your cardio says she can do that here. Yeah. yeah. It's helped a lot, like spread out the sessions. So I'll do the cardio session and strength in the morning. Um, and then have another session at the gym that usually includes some, some equipment that's only at the gym. Um, and then that allows me to come back home and do whatever I need to do at home. Um, like accessory work, maybe another Metcon, um, something a little bit more simple that we can do in the garage, but it helps my intensity stay up. Whereas if I'm just having to hammer it all at the gym within three hours, um, it's not quite the same. And so it's been awesome. Like, I am so excited to see <laughs> all the fitness that can be gained in this garage. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's really hot. The weather is a lot more unpredictable in Mississippi uh, compared to Hermosa, if you can imagine. And so it, it's a little bit easier to control the climate in the garage as well. It still gets hot and, and cold and everything, but... Um, we don't have to just stay in a in a really, really hot gym or stay in a really, really cold gym. We can kind of go into the living room or anything if we need to and then come back out when we're ready. So I, I'm, a, I'm curious. The weather's actually been really good since we, I would say, not finished it, but been able to do more. Mm-hmm. But like with winter coming, it gets kind of bitter. So um, it's a lot easier to just heat up this garage instead of the 10,000 square foot facility that, that we work at. Just oh. pack on a couple of sweatshirts. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. Throw, the, throw the rubber suit on. Just call feel, it feel good about it. Yeah. Feel so mobile. <laughs> so it sounds like it's it's like you're spreading your training out and that you're kind of like training all day and that you feel like that's more effective than like fitting it in and then going back to daily life. Yeah, for me, yes. And one of the things that I feel like I've learned recently is that I've got to pack on some more volume because um, it seems like that's the trend for higher um, competitive athletes. They're just able to hold an intensity with higher volume. And I haven't been able to do that in recent competitions. It's just kind of destroyed me and I don't want that to happen again. So I, you know, for, I guess the last two, two and a half years, it was like, oh, you're doing too much volume, you're doing too much, you don't want to overtrain, blah, blah, blah. Well, it's not necessarily that. It's, it's you need to train that much and in order to, to be competitive, but you, you have to recover. So it's not necessarily lowering the volume, but upping the recovery and making sure there's a good balance between the two so that you can do the volume because the volume is going to be there on competition day whether you're ready for it or not. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that I think this is giving us the opportunity to get ready for that side of it. Mm-hmm. That, that's got to be insane. What are you just like training for four hours throughout the day and then sleeping for the rest? Like, how are you <laughs> keeping up with this? Yeah, yeah. Training. Well, I mean, it, it, it sounds crazy, I guess, to everyone, but I love it. Like, I finish a workout in this gym or in this garage and I'm just like literally nowhere else I'd rather be I just don't like I love it so much and I think that I love it because I have a goal in mind and I believe that I will reach that goal but it's just fun it's just fun to me and I don't even have to have anyone with me I like doing it alone I don't or I like doing it with people but like I just genuinely love it 
So yeah, it's like, and it's like when you're full and then you see the dessert menu and you're like, man, I wish I was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what, what is the goal then? Like, do you have something coming up or, or what are your aspirations? Um, yeah, I mean, I can, I want to go to the CrossFit Games. I don't, I would love to go to the CrossFit Games 2021. I mean, that's always the goal. Um, I think this year specifically, I would love to win a sanctional, um, which are the, the um, competitions that qualify you to the CrossFit Games. Um, and we have a goal for the Open too, and that's to qualify to the Games through the Open. And so there's lots of goals. They're all very set, very high. Uh, it's kind of scary, like saying them out loud because yeah. it's like, what if you don't do that? But I've honestly, I've set so many goals and I've come up short so many times. I'm like, what's another one? <laughs> 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 so I'm just going to keep on trying, you know, just keep, keep putting in the work. And I, I know if I keep working hard and it's like true hard work, it's going to pay off. Yeah. And it's kind of the next phase kind of where Nicole's at anyways. If we go back to the beginning and it's like, Hey, I want to do an open all the workouts RX. And so it's like, okay, like let's just try to do that. And then it's like, Hey, I want to qualify for regionals. And it's like, okay, I think that's great. And then that happens. And then it's like, okay, the way the format changed with, with CrossFit, it's like, we want to qualify for all these sanctionals. That's where all the, that's where all the big dogs are playing. Like we want to, we want to be one of those two and it's like, okay. And then that's kind of where that led us up to about last year where it's like, Oh, we did everything that we've set out to do so far. We, we wanted to qualify for regionals and we wanted to also qualify for sanctionals. And we did that and that allowed us to travel a lot and also compete with just the best in the world. And then we were at the point where it's like, okay, like this is, we belong here. We, we know we can compete with this group. So it's like, well, what's next? And it's like, well, let's win one of these things and let's go to the games and let's see what the next, the next level looks like. And then even beyond the games, it's like, okay, what, what's that? It's like, well, I want to do well at the games as well. So it's just kind of the next, I think it's the only, the most logical next step in her career is to, is to work to qualify for the games. And I think it's okay to say that. And I think it's, and if you fall short, so what, it's still sport. Like you can, you know, everyone that's on the NBA, on the NBA basketball team is like, I want to win a championship. And it's like, it's okay to say that. That's why you're playing the game. So yeah, that's the whole point. That's the whole point. Like it is, it, I just think about it. It's like, it's, it is four hours or five hours of work on top of the recovery on top of, you still have a full-time job and it's like, you wouldn't do this to just be like, Oh, it's kind of fun. You know, like, you know, it's, it's like a good hobby. You know, it's better than other things. Like, no, like you put in this kind of work because you, you do want to see what you can achieve. And um, if you're bashful about saying it, I think it's, it, it's, it's foolish to do that. It's foolish to not just go ahead and let the world know or, I mean, we know, we talk to each other about it all the time. So this isn't a surprise. So it's just some people get, I think we get lost in like the haters of social media where it's like, I want to be the best. And everyone's kind of like, like what, why can't, why, why should you be the best? They've already, look, the best are already out there. And it's like, they weren't the best at one point and they went out and they got it. So it's okay for you to try too, you know? So. I can't wait to watch the games and be like, I know her. Oh <laughs> That's my goal for next year. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any sort of noticeable tan, like specific difference that you can see from athletes? You said you were sort of made it to different levels of competitions or whatever. Is there any like noticeable difference between the, the top tier athletes and just like regular gym goers that you can sort of pinpoint other than obviously a lot Having of a time and effort? <laughs> All that. <laughs> yeah. That too is obviously. I mean, I think, like, I just think to, about my, one of my good friends um, back in California, Chelsea, she was a really great competitor, and she wasn't always, like, the fittest in the room, 
granted, if I was in the room, she was fitter than me. Like she was very, very fit. Don't get me wrong. Her, her name's Chelsea Grigsby. She's uh, a multi-regional athlete. She's been to um, the games on a team. Uh, but she, she just has this grit where it's like, I don't care who, who you are. I don't care if you've been to the games 10 times. I'm going to still try to, to, to beat you. Like, mm-hmm. even if I need to cut your throat, like I'm going to do this. <laughs> and I think that is um, what you see in the top. Um, it's not, can you do it? It's how fast can you do it? You know, it's like this killer attitude, even when you're losing, you know? Yeah. I think there's definitely a, there's a fearless component to it um, that takes that for some people have it naturally and some people have to learn, but it's being able to step on that floor and just being able to put everything together. And that's where to compete. And the people who have figured that out um, are the separation because we start to see now, like everyone puts in work and everyone has the, the secret sauce that makes them the fittest ever, but it's the mental component of just being able to uh, silence a lot of things and then turn the volume up on yourself and allow yourself to, what we say is like, allow yourself to showcase your fitness. And if you're so in your head that you're worried about what's going on, like you leave the competition floor, like, dang, like, I missed, I missed my shot here and I could have, but cause you couldn't um, just quiet the noise. And so that's the biggest separator that I think that we're working on. And um, you know, you, you hear people that are like, Oh, well, if I didn't have a job and I just worked out all the time, then I, I could probably be there too. And it's like, maybe, but you didn't. And, but there's also people who are full-time nurses or full-time firefighters or full-time police officers or full-time teachers, and they make it as well. So it's like, you can't really give yourself an excuse either. Um, that I think some people want to give uh, like me, like, Oh, you know, I got a lot to, I got a lot to program. You know, I, I don't have time, but it's like, you no, know, if you wanted it. And like, if you really looked at yourself and you wanted it, you can go get it. Um, but the separator between the successful competitors, I think the people that are still trying to figure it out is that mental fearless component of just, I'm going to do my best in this event. And then when that event's over with, I'm going to talk it out and debrief and then, Hey, I'm dialed back in for the next event. And can you do that over a series of 12 events or 10 events or whatever the competition is that day or that weekend? Um, those are the ones that you're like, dang, they, they, they're dialed in. So we just need more competitions to open back up. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, yeah, it's funny too, because like if you if you extend that sort of logic, like competing, I mean it's it's the same in any sport, any competition. Right. And like if you surround yourself with really, really great competitors, you sort of have to raise your game up or you just go home mm-hmm. like a loser. Uh, <laughs> um <laughs> But a lot of this now, especially, it's like it's a lot of individual stuff. And you can be the best person at your gym or the best right. person in your garage, especially if you live at home, you're usually the best person. So like <laughs> a lot of it's like, it seems like uh, just like a lot of mental stuff, like tricking yourself into kicking your own ass into, <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it becomes where it's not a trick anymore, right? It's a switch. And um how quickly can you turn that switch on and how accessible is that switch when no one else is around? You know, there's some days when I can help Nicole, like, Hey, you need to turn it on. And she's like, Oh yeah, I'm back in it. But 95% of the time um, she's turning on that switch. And if from a coaching side, I noticed that it's not, Hey, it wasn't, I don't think it was there today. You know, what's going on. And that's, that's the benefit of, of, us being a team is that it's, it's easy for us to talk about, well, I don't know, this was, you know, last night I didn't sleep that well, you know, cause you were snoring the whole time. And, <laughs> um, you know, well, I didn't eat that well. It's like, you know, because we wanted to go, you know, so it's just like, we can talk about, I know what, I know what that is and not using it as a detriment, but using that as like, okay, this is where she's at today. This is where I expect her intensity to be today. How can we maximize today? And then, you know, it may not be a hundred percent, but it's a hundred percent of what she can give today. And that's just, 
we're trying to surround ourselves with uh, people that want to want to be a part of that, and you know, it's something that we always try to keep in check as well. You know, we, I, I don't, you found it, I think, but it was a it was a quote that we just talking about the surrounding yourself. It was uh, if you surround yourself with five winners, uh, you become a sixth winner. But if you surround yourself by five losers, then you become the sixth loser. Mm-hmm. And so. I was thinking about that at church today too, because who we were sitting with, I was like, we're surrounding ourselves with, with winners now. Okay, you know? good, yeah. good. I was like, Whoa. No, 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 I was like, you know, it, losers. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to be a part of this. I'm out of here. Look at all these losers. You can be your own. No, um, no, but just surrounding yourself with people that, that have the same goals or at least want to see you successful. You know, and it's like, like when you move to a new place, that it's just it's hard and especially when the whole world shuts down you're kind of like i i can't even find find people five people to surround myself with so it's like what it's just us you know and which is great but again to be successful i think it does take a team and to have a group of people to that are all geared towards the same goal that was a little off topic but i just think um yeah, that's where we're at. That's where we're getting to at the end of 2020. <laughs> well, when you talk about that intensity switch and you're working on it when you're by yourself and then being able to turn it on when you're competing against other people, but how does that switch get affected when you're in like a crowd of a ton of people watching like on the competition floor? I know it's been a while since you've done that, but like, do you train for the like performing mindset? Like when curtain is up? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's still like... <laughs> Uh, when that classical music hits <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's a we're doing well though. <laughs> <laughs> it is definitely uh definitely still working on that one i think like the ballet was so different because um it wasn't like ever a fight to the end i had done the routine a million times i was ready you know dress rehearsal we're good everything was comfortable nothing if if I didn't like something we could change it like it was like oh, yeah sure let's do this instead and so it was not like challenging in that way and and competing in CrossFit is so much different than that where like you are forced to adapt and I mean I'd like to say I'm adaptable but I guess I'm not that much like you know in my own self I have to work on that but um finding that switch in competition I'm still trying to get like I'm trying not to get distracted I'm trying to stay in my own lane like head down eyes forward but it's it's hard like you expect whenever you walk out there like oh I've been in all this work I've done so good like I'm super fit I feel great and then the person next to you on either side are like you know four five six reps getting ahead of you and you're just like ah shoot like (laughs) I, I suck. I suck. I, I'm losing. I'm failing. I am making a fool of myself. And, you know, that is a struggle for me. And um, then you finish and you're like, well, that was my chance. And I, I just gave it up. And that was not my true fitness. That was my true, like, mental collapse in front of all these people. Um, and you know, someone recently asked me what I do to train to my mental toughness. And I was like, I don't really know. <laughs> I don't train that, I guess. Uh, I, I mean, I, I like to think I'm mentally tough, but it's just a different kind of toughness, um, on the competition floor. It's just, uh, the ability to not get distracted and to be confident. I think the confidence factor, you know, you get out there and you feel like you don't belong or it's like, Oh, that girl has such big quads. Like she's way stronger than me. And you just don't realize like they're hurting as bad as you. And Mm -hmm. if they can do it, you can do it. And that's kind of like this mindset that I've tried to, to, um, put in my brain over the past few weeks of training. Um, just to kind of develop that, that killer instinct attitude to have on the competition floor. But I, it's definitely still a work in progress and the only way to get it developed more is to practice and that's kind of hard right now because yeah. there's no 
Matt, you can't pretend to be a crowd in the garage. Come on. Boo. No, I, I, pretend to be, I pretend to be the weaker athlete that she can step her throat on or step, you know, step on my throat and like, you know, and just like pretend that I'm hurting. So then she can, hit and then she can be like, oh, this is my chance. And, uh, and then she just puts the pedal to the metal. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's always one that I think we're still, um, I, wish I'm, I wish I could solve it, but it's still that Rubik's Cube of how do we make it more like a competition atmosphere. And I think still it's just kind of the evolution of where we're at, where the first goal um, was getting used to performing in front of a camera. You know, cause that's, that's the open, that's the, um, that's all the sanctional qualifiers. So it's like, hey, you've got a camera right in your face and we have to measure all the stuff. And it's like, you did this big warm up, and now we have this big ordeal of showing all the equipment and okay, I'm putting the tripod here. Let's make sure you're on the spot. Okay, now do your routine. And so we kind of figured that out and hopefully we still have that figured out. And but yeah, there's still more about, I think surrounding yourself with other really, really great athletes. Uh, that's what you're kind of seeing at the top as well now as more people are willing to travel um, and stay with a certain athlete for weeks just so they can get used to training at a higher intensity. And, um, you know, and that's what we're trying to develop here. It was, it was a little bit easy. The beautiful spot about Hermosa is that it was, it's around everything. You can find 10 other great anything doesn't matter what the job is there's there's 10 people out there that are really good at that so you can surround yourself with with that people but in the crossfit you know you can go to a different gym right down the street and someone's got a good athlete there and so we you can network that and we're getting there here and it's just um i think that's what's going to be the best for her at the moment um if i'm just kind of brainstorming right now it's more of like in a workout, you get one shot at doing something. I'm going to just rev your heart rate up really, really bad. And then it's like, okay, you know, here's a Nerf gun. You got to hit the target, you know, it's like, and just like, Hey, you have to perform right now. You don't get two chances. Mm. So, um, those kind of like, let's just put you in more high pressure situations that have low cost if you fail or it's like, Oh, we missed it. Okay. Let's try that again. You know, or tomorrow I'll give you a new challenge. I could see that helping, but that's just something that we would have to kind of plug and play and see what happens. So, are you being literal with Nerf guns? Yeah, <laughs> real gun. Put some real pressure. <laughs> oh my god, let's work up to real gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're not yeah Nerf yeah. then paintball. Then, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, we'll go BB airsoft and yeah. then from there. But did you see? No, I thought I'm, it was. Um, I forget what it was. Maybe it was regionals or something. They did the the everybody did their individual qualifying over Zoom. And yes. um, it was just sort of weird. Like it, it felt, it, I mean, it was clearly the best athlete. So they're mm -hmm. crushing, but you know, the, they'll finish, you, you know, you see them sort of like look around like as a response and there's nobody else there. They're just there in the, you know, they're like looking for that sort of external um, mm -hmm. other person motivation. And a couple of times, like the round would be over and the guy didn't have to do another rep, but he would because he couldn't see anything. Right. Yeah. So I think we're entering into a weird, yeah, I don't know if <laughs> a this weird is a competition. This is a blip, right? Like, yeah. is this, do we need to do more things like this? Because every year and a half, things are going to have to shut down and this is how we're going to be uh, performing yeah. our new norms. Or is this like, hey, that was just a weird year. And when we talk about it to people who join CrossFit five years from now, they're going to be like, what like you know we have like phones connected to you know our house you know it's kind of the same conversation yeah. um, why is she so good on camera well this one time in 2020 yeah yeah you know like we in the you know so it's just um who knows you know i i really do hope we see more um live competitions i think we're getting that way people are kind of figuring out what's a safe way to bring people in where everyone's comfortable and the athletes are safe and the fans are safe. I think um, people are figuring that out. So I think, you know, next year we'll, we'll see a lot more live competitions. It may look different, but um, it's just, I think there's just, there's nothing quite like that being able to just put yourself out there literally and seeing your competitors instead of looking on a screen and checking a leaderboard, like, Oh, I guess I did good. Like, yeah. that's yeah. cool. So, that's weird. so weird. Man. 
Have you worked out with a mask on? Not one time. So the that sucks. I went for the, a run the other day. It was like it was like I was getting waterboarded. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, obviously been, I'm, uh, I'm whining. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> we've been really lucky about that. Um, one, the facility that we work at or that I work at that she works out at is 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 a huge facility with a bunch of garage doors and um, it's practically a pavilion once you've kind of opened everything up mm -hmm. and um, we're we're kind of off the beaten track too. So there's not really much going on. We're not in a high dense population area. So, you know, we shut down at one point, but then that just meant we kind of had the gym to ourselves. So it was kind of like, all right, here we go. Like yeah. we continue training and then. That was supposed to be off record, but. But, you know. We'll, we'll bleep it out. Okay. <laughs> um, just one long bleep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I remember people working out with those, um, I mean, years ago when they had those like, Oh yeah. The bang mask. Yeah. The pain. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Yeah, the they, hell still, they still do that. Do they yeah. just do anything? Are they, is that uh, just like uh, to look cool on Instagram or. I think it's like used to train if you're about to go do a competition in high altitude or something like that. I think that's yeah, like underwater. I think it's, it's short term fitness. I, I don't think it's like a long term thing. I think it helps you just get used to being uncomfortable because yeah. that oh, yeah. it's just making you uncomfortable more yeah. so than a physiological like brown or groundbreaking like change i just think hey, we're gonna limit your oxygen supply and go go do work and it's like this doesn't feel good and it's like okay well if you can get used to not feeling good then when you don't have to wear it you're like hey at least it's not as bad as wearing a mask you know, <laughs> you know we're so, all doing that yeah. right now. Once we're done with the mask, we're like, hey, at least it's not yeah, a mask. Yeah. <laughs> I'll yeah, do a blindfold next time. Uh, the pros of wearing a mask is more people don't see me mouth breathing so much. So that's <laughs> uh, I was, yeah, just like, I just realized like my mouth is not closed since I put this thing on. <laughs> God, no one has looked at me. <laughs> so mouth breathers are really... Benefit. really benefiting from yeah, yeah benefit. winners of 2020 mouth breathers <laughs> so matt tell us about your programming for other people too and, and yeah and um stuff online yeah so i do a lot of programming i say a lot um i work with athletes and it's all different types of athletes we have a master's athlete we have a couple athletes that like to do tough mutters um we have some that are like hey i just got an injury and I'm trying to figure out how to work through it. And so um, I programmed a lot when I was at CrossFit South Bay uh, for the gym. And that kind of kind of branched into like, hey, do you do other things as well? And then it's like, well, I program for my wife. And she's a high level athlete. And I program for a gym that has a broad spectrum of athletes. So um, I feel confident in working with, you know, whoever comes down the pipeline. But um, uh, it's hard to juggle sometimes with because I, I really try to put attention to it's if someone is asking for my help i want it to be an individual program i don't want it to be um oh it's just like a watered down version of nicole's programming because um what nicole is doing is very specific to her um even though i believe if anyone does follow it it's you're going to get more fit but it may not be exactly what you need you know so there's some things that we stay away from because either she's working through an injury at, at a certain point or, you know, we have a certain competition coming up. So we're changing our schedule. So I don't think everyone needs to have that. Um, in the same sense where our program for the gym, um, that's almost too broad. And so that doesn't really help the person specifically that, you know, whatever they're working for. So um, I enjoy it though. I think everything is just kind of like a puzzle. And so when you, um, I get a big whiteboard out and we start kind of drilling out the days and kind of making sure things are balanced. And, um, you know, if we do need to favor something because that's their sport specific or that's their weakness, then we can look and see, okay, now we're, we're going to work 60% of this instead of 50% of this or something like that. And, um, so we just kind of spend a lot of time looking at a whiteboard and a, and a computer screen and, um, just kind of tinkering away. But, um, over the years, you kind of develop a formula that that's at least a foundational piece that kind of gets the ball rolling. And then you just kind of plug and play into that formula. 
So what's the formula? <laughs> it's pretty Boobies. simple. Yeah. No, um, I mean, it, there's not a huge secret. It's, you know, I believe in kind of the different, the different metabolic phases. So we want to make sure that we have um, short workouts, medium workouts, and long workouts. And so if you know that's your rule of three, if I do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, this short, medium, long, then Thursday, if we're, let's just say we're doing five days in a row, um, short, medium, long, short, medium. So now my next Monday is long, short, medium. So now we have this balance that goes across a six week program. But then if you flip everything nine degrees and say you only work out on Mondays, you also have that balance that goes through there. Um, so now I know my workouts are short, medium, long. Okay. Now let's start plugging and playing upper body pulls and lower body you know, pushes and then upper body pushes and lower body pulls. And well, this person has back issues. So we're going to make sure we put core and glute work in, you know, two to three times a week. And sometimes it's going to be a stabilizer. If someone has back issues, then we know to program, Hey, we want to put a lot of core and glute and hamstring work, making sure that we can teach them how to turn those on. So we may put that in and kind of overload that for a couple of weeks, just to kind of see if we can start to trend in a certain direction. And then if we see improvement, we may be, you know, tapering off a little bit and seeing how they function then. And then depending on the sport that they're at, we can kind of break down the movements of that sport. Hey, this is, um, requires a lot of shoulder mobility, but they also need a lot of strengthening. So let's figure out workouts that plug into this formula, that short, medium, long, that also help them in the sport that they're looking for. Oh, so you do sport, other sport athletes. Sometimes. Um, so if I'm working with them individually, yes. Um, um, working with a football player, working with a baseball player, but right at the moment, it's kind of like obstacle course. And uh, like I said, I have a master's athlete that I work with and then Nicole. Um, so beyond that, it's just kind of going from there. Do you think you could find any ballerinas to start getting <laughs> jacked? I've, act, I've worked with them. So it's cool. Um, you know, yeah, I've worked with them, you know, and that wasn't so much, she was a young athlete. So I worked with her, um, at South Bay. And so her parents were members of the gym. She's a high level ballerina. I mean, I don't know. I'm not an expert at the sport, but then you also know like, okay, tell me about your sport. What do you have to do? And they're like, well, I'll do a lot of jumping, I'm like single leg or two legs. I'm like, we do a lot of single. Like, yes. And so it's like, okay. So when you start immediately thinking, okay, you have to do a lot of single leg jumps. So we need to make sure we do a lot of single leg work. We want to make sure that we're balanced on both sides. We also need to do a lot of, um, you know, strengthening of the ankle joints and the knee joints so that we can brace correctly. Um, zero way. mobility needed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> zero mobility. Um, but then also, you know, the, I think the funny part, not the funny part, but the interesting part about, um, ballet is there's this extreme kind of hyper extension of the back. This is the posture, right? So, you know, Nicole being one, two, this is kind of her natural position. So there's a lot of like, Ooh, let's get that, you know, let's get that rib cage down a little bit and stop flexing the back so much. And so we can, um, First of all, you never stop flexing, but I, I yeah. Yeah. That's true. always flex. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so we would, I would make sure to find balance. So if I know that the athlete is always here, um, I understand that that's part of the sport and they need to be in that position, but I also want to make sure that there's balance here. So we would spend more time in hollow position um, just so that the lower back isn't completely worked um, all day. So um, and that, again, that goes back to like, that's the fun part, you know, working with a swim team and learning the sport. Cause that's not, a, that wasn't something I grew up on, but mm -hmm. learning sport, talking to coaches, talking to athletes, what do you do on, um, when you have long tracks compared to short tracks, you know, how many flip turns are you doing? And once you start to learn the sport, it's it makes it a lot easier to develop a program for that. Cause you, you have all the knowledge it's, it's, it's in there somewhere. You just got to figure out which, which tools you need to pull out for this, for this athlete. It's interesting that you say that you're really balancing short, medium, long, mm -hmm. because with my extensive CrossFit L1 training, Absolutely. I, but <laughs> I thought that people mostly lean on the medium at that or that like that they were saying that the, sh the shorter ones will still make you better at longer or, mm -hmm. or the kind of medium ones will, will help you in the sprint and, 
and help you let, like it's, they're more effective. Mm -hmm. And so that you should lean on that more. And then maybe once in a while do a long workout. Whereas it seems like you guys are pretty balanced. Yeah. Um, I think programming for a class, I think that helps a lot more because you think about medium time domain, you're probably talking somewhere between 12 to 16 minutes and 16 minutes being a little bit longer, say like a long medium workout. Um, that works out well in a class. Um, because that's kind of what people are looking for. Like you, but yeah. so you may kind of start with more workouts. So like when I'm programming reverses, there may be more medium workouts, but I'm going to start to tease them a little bit. So it's like, okay, so this is going to be a short time domain workout, but we're going to make it last 15 minutes by throwing in interval work. And so technically your workout lasted 15 minutes, but you worked out for nine of those 15. Um, so that's one way we can start to like, instead of just 15 continuous minutes of work, we start to kind of bring you into more of that shorter time domain. So you can experience what does it mean to actually open up on an assault bike? You know, that's kind of the easiest way to get people to understand, like, this is what almost max effort feels like, because there's not really another machine that allows you to use legs and arms continuously. Um, you know, so you can kind of tease them with something like that. And they're like, oh, that's this is how my body feels when I'm giving an absurd amount of effort. Where else can I give more absurd amount of effort? You know, and then it's like, okay, now that you know what you're supposed to feel, let's try to apply that feeling to this workout. And they're like, okay, so now they start to see the benefits of short workouts. And then we can start going to the other side of the spectrum of, hey, let's, um, let's go a little bit longer and let's see, I want you to feel like X. And so then we start saying, okay, well, you know what X feels like? Now apply that to a 30 minute piece if we ever go that long really? in a piece. You know? oh, so crazy. then it becomes not as daunting. And then the athletes also understand the expectation. And so a lot of times it's like, no, I just thought I was supposed to go hard all the time. It's like, no, sort of. But hard is, is different based on what we're looking for. Like hard, a hard marathon is – for me, <laughs> like a 10 minute mile, you know, like that would be a hard marathon for me. Um, but, you know, if I just said, hey, run one mile and you say you got 10 minutes to do it, you're like, oh, well, that's not hard at all. So okay. like you're still running, but now we know different time domains, so different expectations. Um, so there's that. And then it doesn't get boring either. If you know you're coming in and it's always a 15 minute workout, you're like, I, I get bored with it just as much as anyone else would. Mm. So yeah but like nicole are you dreading the long ones when you know it's coming <laughs> no i think like it works so well where it's like okay i'm ready for i'm ready for something like challenging in this way yeah. every because every day is so different like and the balance is so well that every time it comes up or whatever it is um i'm excited you know I mean, I feel that way after like a deload week. I'm like, all right, I'm ready to get back in it. But you're like every couple of day or <laughs> two hours later. Every morning. Like, yeah. Ready. Yeah. 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 Morning workout was crap. I can't wait for my afternoon workout. <laughs> yeah. Then maybe, maybe, maybe a little dabble in a little PM session too, you know? Yeah. Uh, Let's get crazy. They take this. Yeah. And I mean, with Nicole's programming, it's a lot different. She's, um, I don't think I could replicate uh the same kind of teamwork that we have with someone else and just because i know um we communicate so well about what she needs and what i know she needs and so her volume is is a lot of volume so within the same day she may have a really short workout a really long workout and then a really medium workout and so then the next day is actually well if we go off that trend well now you need another short workout so mm -hmm. um if you look at her programming you're like man like that was a long cardio sesh in the morning and then you had like some quick sprint work and then now you have this kind of standard Metcon coming up. And so she's kind of hitting all the um, metabolic phases in, in one day. And so, but that's the sport, you know? So, um, and then it, again, sometimes we go in different phases where it's like, Hey, we're going to just do a bunch of long workouts in a row because we need to start kind of tapping into that more and we can do that. So, because, we don't necessarily have rules that we need to follow. We just need to follow what's best for her. It's, I mean, like, it's, I want to go back to how you're recovering. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> like, 
what the heck I'm so sore from yesterday and that was like all of you, it was yesterday ago. I can't imagine like working out yet that That was often. yesterday ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, is it like supplements, is it really focusing on sleep? I know that you use a whoop, right? Yeah, yeah, I have a whoop. That's been awesome. Um, if anything, it just like makes me more competitive to get a higher strain. So maybe it's not that great all the time. Yeah. But- <laughs> you're not trying to get that recovery up you want the green in the morning you're yeah, like no right. I, want I do right. want the green we'll just let the sleep we'll just let the sleep decide what it is but the strain we can dictate we're gonna yeah. just yeah. <laughs> yeah. um yeah i mean to be honest i'm not that great i haven't been that great at recovering uh, my entire career in crossfit because um i worked as a full-time nurse and so my recovery days were spent um, on my feet for on 12 feet hours. Around, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, since we've moved here, I've had more opportunity to tap into like what it means just to wake up and train because I'm working from home and um, I have like a little bit more free time. Uh, I ha- well, I have a lot more free time. But that time is being filled now with just more working out. But that's given me the opportunity just to kind of focus on only working out and only recovering. Mm-hmm. And um, we have the an awesome gym owner at uh, the place Matt works. And he, he gives us access to pretty much anything and everything we want. They have a hyperbaric chamber. They have uh, Normatec sleeves. Um, you know, there's just an endless amount of opportunity for me to take to, to try to, to maximize my recovery every day. Um, I take, I don't take any supplements. Um, really I take creatine and I've actually tried taking CBD, um, the tincture, (laughs) (laughs) little drops. Uh, I haven't really noticed a huge difference. Um, but it may just be the, the type of CBD I have. I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, I think I need, that's something I need to get better at, but, um, it's just a mindset in my opinion. It's like, you have to wake up and think, okay, I'm going to work hard. And then in between this, I'm going to get my body ready for whatever I'm doing next. Not, I'm going to go get some stuff done. I'm going to go like grocery shopping, clean the house, like do some chores. No, it's, in between my sessions, I'm getting ready for my next session. It's just a mindset of my goal. What I want to do is number one. And it sounds very selfish, but that's just kind of how it has to be for a bit. Um, but having that mindset shift to my in between time is just getting myself ready for the next session. And also, I think, I think that people don't realize that they're tiring themselves out by going and cleaning the house or going to the grocery store or um even like mentally sometimes like uh like playing on your phone versus just like reading a book like mentally that's a huge difference and you can feel it in your upcoming workout or your upcoming day even that's why we're sort of it's interesting to talk about recovery like we've talked to a lot of people about gadgets and chambers and leg sleeves (laughs) and (laughs) but um a couple of the people that we talked to um they said that like mentally realizing that like this is my goal and this rest period is part of that goal right. Right. that is a big switch for them it's staying focused it's so hard to stay focused um because it's like i'm just a checklist person like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this okay i'm done and like you're if you want to be good in this sport there's an endless like you're not there's no checklist you just it's your lifestyle. It's how you have to live. Mm -hmm. And, and that's something I'm learning and just trying to figure out how to do. And and it's hard some days because you want to like hang out with family and you want to like get stuff done. I'm super OCD. I love my house to be clean (laughs) and I'm the only one that can do it well. So (laughs) I have to do it. Very smart. Very smart. (laughs) She's good. She's good at what she does. (laughs) No. Uh, so yeah I mean those things kind of yeah they seem trivial and it seems very m- minor but it, over a period of time it takes away yeah and I'm I think 
we were the only one take a deep dive into it. You know, we when we were living in California, it was very much us. And it was because um, we were so far away from everyone that we knew and at the time. And so we could limit a lot of distractions and really focus on what we needed to. And what brought the new challenge is when we moved back home to be close to family is like, oh, family is here and family wants time and that that it deserves time, you know, being able to spend time with her parents and um, and trying to trying to spend more time with my parents. And um, but then you start realizing, oh, that that kind of takes away. And so it's like, OK, well, I'll just, I'm just going to take a dollar out of your bank account. And you're like, oh, you know, it's just a dollar, you know, here or there. Then it's yeah. like, but now we're going to take a couple more dollars. And then if we want to talk about like investing, then it's like, now I don't have those dollars to spend back into whatever we're trying to work on. So, um, you know, that sometimes I get frustrated and I know it's, but there's, there's some benefit or really there's a lot of benefit to just having that, Hey, you've got this family now that's like on board. And most of that just means we just need to teach people what, what on board means, you know, and, um, respecting that this is our shot at making it a career and it's not just a hobby. And like everyone has really been accepting of that. Like, Oh, you're not just working out for fun. It is fun to work out, but we're also working out for a purpose. And so we want to make sure that if you want to be a part of this, that you understand that this is, this is the purpose. And if you're on board with it, great. We love you. And even if you're not, we still love you, but we just want to make sure that um, you understand where our mindset is going into today, whatever today is. And so I think that's been a, um, that's been one of not the challenges, but just the learning experiences for this, for moving back. That's so crazy. It sounds like I can't imagine another sport requiring so much of your life. It seems like mentally, physically, every aspect of your day is needs to be focused towards CrossFit. And there are other like top tier athletes that that don't require that much. Like you don't see Michael Jordan being like, well, I got to be Michael Jordan because I limited my family time. Like that. <laughs> well, I don't know. Um I think you do hear a lot of athletes that are like, man, you know, early on, you know, I, I spent a lot of time away from everyone because I was so driven. You know, I just heard it was a Rich Froning interview, which is still CrossFit, but he was just like, you know, I kind of regret um, some of the, some of the relationships that I kind of pushed away or maybe didn't develop as much because I was so focused on my goal. And it's like, okay, well, you're the four time fittest in the world. That's, that's why you were because you were willing to make that sacrifice. And so, yes, there are some athletes that in any sport, they're like, I get by off of just raw talent and you do good and you can have a healthy career. But if you want to think about the, the mentality of the greatest, you know, you think about this year with Kobe Bryant and it's like, everyone knows that Mamba mentality where it was just like, it is only basketball and if you're not basketball then I don't want anything to do with it and was like man that's that's not the right way to do it but it's like there's a reason why everyone knows Kobe you know there's a reason why everyone knows Michael there's a reason everyone knows Mike Tyson it's because that's that is their focus and some people don't have to have that and I think some people um, can find that balance later on but I also think there is a certain level of sacrifice to get to a certain level and once you're there, you can start to figure out what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. Yeah, it's almost nicer that you guys can be in that sport together. Yes, absolutely. That's a huge advantage. That's why I always think. You imagine not. <laughs> right. I don't think, again, like I just don't think um, it could be replicated any other way. If someone else uh, has the same goals, like, hey, I want to go to the CrossFit Games. Can you see you there? <laughs> yeah, it's like, like, I don't know, like the time that it takes, I, it just, you, it wouldn't, it would take away, right? It would take away from something else. And so, um, you know, I'm sure there are greater talents out there that can, that can do it. I think we see it with Shane. Shane has got Tia Claire Toomey and, and Matt Fraser. Um, but even then that was an evolution. It wasn't like Shane was always, 
Matt's coach. Matt was successful before Shane, but now is kind of evolved into something even even greater. It looks like. Um, but again, I think that's a that's a communication side of it too. I think they all have real com- good communication and expectations for everyone's roles. And with that comes, it's easy to find success because everyone knows their role. And that's where we're at too. I know where my role is. I know where her role is. And she calls me out if I'm not doing my job and I call her out if she's not doing her job. And it's not a emotional um, attachment to that side of it. It's like, hey, you know, check yourself. You're supposed to, you know, I don't know if you're putting enough time into this or whatever, you know, it's like, we're not doing it because we want them to feel bad. We do it because we know how important these goals are. Yeah. And Matt Frazier's wife has an Instagram that's just feeding Frazier. Yes. That's her role. <laughs> so right. She's totally on board. She knows her role. Yeah. She's, she's killing it. And, you know, and <laughs> if me. you go with that, like Matt surrounded himself with people that only want or only know what Matt's goal is. Um, you know, with Matt Fraser, it's like he only wakes up and, and sleeps, eats, and, and trains, and there are zero distractions. And if you're going to be a distraction in his life, there's going to be people around him that get that person out of his life because he's so focused right now. So, hence, he's very successful. So, um, <laughs> that's funny. You're talking about when, when you said, like, when I, when I, when either of you tells you something, it's, it's coming from a place of love. I remember when me and Allie took a, a workout class i don't know it was a couple of years ago it was something silly and but the our trainer was like all right that was a good work or our trainer for the day was like good workout all right now we're gonna do another like 10 minutes of really tough ab stuff and we sort of all groaned because <laughs> it was a brutal workout and now oops we're gonna do 10 minutes 10 more minutes of abs and he was like you're welcome you're welcome <laughs> and it really was like wow yeah dude i asked you to do this yeah, I, I did walk in <laughs> here so. i paid you to be here you know yeah. i'm not like and he's like let's go this is what you wanted and we're like <laughs> it is what i want holy you know it was a little bit of a you kind of got brainwashed there is what it sounds like max it was more like i do want this yeah <laughs> i yeah. suppose i do more broccoli yeah. thank you yeah. that's great <laughs> Well, wait, so you're training people to write programming now too. Is that right? Cause I, I need your help. That's the goal. That's, that's where, you know, kind of big dream. You always think about how can you, um, affect, how can you cast the biggest net and how can you affect more people? And it, you start the simple way. It's like, Oh, like I enjoy helping people. I want to go be a coach. And so you start with that and it's like, well, when I'm a coach, I can work, I can help one person. Then you're like, oh, well, I want to own a gym. I think I can help more people that way. So then it's like, oh, now I can affect, you know, 100 people and help improve their lives. And then you start to realize like, oh, how, what's the next step? And, you know, at one point it was always like, I want to be on seminar staff and, um, you know, go get your L3 and then intern. And then now you can teach people to coach. And then those coaches can go help people. And then that just starts this trickle effect where you can start, you know, making a lot of change. and. I started thinking like, what are the skills that I have that I think people need or want and that can help? And it's like, wow, I I really enjoy programming. And I think a lot of people think it's really complex and it needs to be like these finite numbers and like percentage 0.235% of effort today. And it's like, there's a system and you can get that detailed if you want, but if it's just, hey, you know, my gym shut down and I don't like just, you know, thumbing through Instagram and thinking, Oh, that's a good workout. I'm just going to do that. And then the next day is like another killer workout. And then the next day is another killer workout. You're like, you start to see where injury can happen that way. But if you just like, Oh, I know I do short, long, medium workouts and a couple with like strength gymnastics and Olympic lifting. And I keep finding this pattern. Then it's like, Oh, I can find a very well-balanced program until things get back to normal or when it's like, no, I actually like this and I like my way of spinning it. You know, whoever that person is, they can spin it to make it their own. And then people may want to do that. And that's awesome. I think that's good. The more we can get people off the couch and doing something that excites them and is healthy for them, then I'm a hundred percent for it. So that's kind of where we're 
starting to think about um, just kind of launching that side of it and figuring out what that looks like. And the first thing is just getting a group of people that want to learn and showing them how to do it. And instead of trying to get people to like follow my programming, it's like, no, I want you to create your own programming. I want you to be able to have the tool. I want to teach you how to fish. You know, that's more so than, than just giving you the fish. Very cool. I feel like I would definitely benefit from that considering my yeah. home gym is just me going in there being like, well, what am I doing today? <laughs> and we saw this <laughs> when, you know, when everything, like, I guess this was March when like a lot of gyms had to shut down for a while because, you know, the way the coronavirus was affecting everyone immediately. Um, I got on a group text with all the athletes I work with and I say, we are not doing a thousand push-ups, a thousand sit-ups, and a thousand air squats today. Because that's all you would see is like, oh, we're doing Murph today at home. And then it's like, we're doing double Murph today tomorrow. And then we're going to do lunge Murph the next day. And it's like, we are not doing that. And they're like, okay, what are we going to do? And I'm like, that's a good question, but we're going to figure it out. You know, and you know, you start figuring out. Um, and then, but then what you start to see is, you know, four weeks later, everyone's like, my knees hurt because I've been running a lot more. It's like, yeah, you went from running maybe three miles a week to running 15 miles a week because you don't know what else there is to do. And you also don't, you never learn balance. And so, you know, we, we dove into that and then that's when it kind of like, oh, we're teaching people how to move well. We should teach people the other side of it too, like when to move well and what to do. So um, that's where all that kind of, I think blossomed where I was like, Oh, like, okay, there's, there's something there. Mm. And um, so I think that's where we want to try to journey to. There is that thing where people do 30 Murphs in 30 days, which I think is insane, but I would like to get yeah. your professional opinion on it. Uh, I think it's, um, if that's your goal and it means something for you and uh, it's more than just like, this is what I think will get me in shape. It's more of, I don't know, there may be a personal reason, a personal attachment to doing it. Um, but just knowing that the, the training leading up to that, I hope was, was smart that, I mean, the cool thing about the human body is there's always someone doing something that we thought was impossible, right? Where the four minute mile was impossible. So if someone told me, we're doing 30 Murphs in 30 days. I'm like, that's a lot. Okay. But you also see the person, there's another event where it's like, it's 24 hour AMRAP of Murph. And so just do 24 hours of Murph. How many rounds can you get? Yeah. Go look at, I think the world record is like 17 <laughs> or 18 Murphs in one day. So, um, a Murph is a round. Oh my God. Yes. So like you finish on a one mile run and then you turn back around and go back on a one mile run again. So it's like, well, that's neat. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. Um, what? Okay. I'm all for it. I just want to make sure people understand that hopefully the people that are doing it, they've been training for that and they understand um, a, what the possible consequences are and uh, B kind of understand how to listen to their body instead of someone just looking that up on YouTube and be like, I want to go do that tomorrow. And it's like, it's like me saying, I want to go do an Ironman tomorrow. And then it just doesn't make sense. I, I'm, I'm nowhere One week near. later, he finishes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But then now you see people who are doing like, I'm doing an Ironman every day for 30 days. And there's a documentary on that. And you're like, that seems disgusting. But again, it's something you train for. And some people have that itch to see what is the limit. And once we see what the limit is, then we can start to reassess what we know about the human body too. So I think that's, it's cool that people are willing to try that. I just hope that they're safe while they do it. Wow. Dang. Uh, well, Max and I are curious and we ask everyone, um, this will be interesting from both of you. <laughs> How do you feel as athletes and a trainer? <laughs> you fitting in alcohol with your athleticism. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're not against it. Um, the, well, I guess fitting it in with your athleticism, I don't think it fits with 
athleticism. I think it fits in a balanced lifestyle if that's the way you want to go with it. Um, when if Nicole is quote unquote in season, then it, if it if it makes sense c- considering what's happening the next day, where it's like, hey, tomorrow's a rest day. If we want to go have a glass of wine with some friends, um, or we want to have some friends over to have a beer, we don't feel guilty about it, and we also know that it's not um, going to necessarily directly affect because you have 24 hours to kind of get out of your system and go through it, or we don't have something like really important happening the next day. Um, I think we're just making mature decisions about that more than it is. Um, we- I think it just depends too, like on the what alcohol are you drinking? Like, are you drinking a super sugary, like sweet um, drink, you know, or is it like a beer or a glass of wine? Like, it's all different, and it all, it affects people differently. Like, I've heard people that have whoop like have better recovery scores when they drink tequila. But if they drink like just one beer, it's just terrible, terrible right. recovery. And so, I mean, it just affects people differently depending on the alcohol. But yeah. it sounds like that you try and fit it in before a recovery day, not before a day that you're working out. Like me and Matt. Right. If I'm going to the gym. <laughs> right. If I'm going to drink, it's going to be the night before um, a day off. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have to work out the, the day that I just drank some alcohol. Yeah, I do see a difference. My whoop is, can tell. It kind of shames me the next morning. Like, I know you have, yeah, you, you have to check yes on that. We, yeah. we know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I do have that in my morning. The thing that you fill out in the morning too. Darn it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I, I think everything is, I don't know. I mean, it just kind of depends on your goals. And we're also not like throwing them back every time we decide like, ooh, this is a chance for us to drink. Like, get it all out of, you know, we're we're not like searching for that. It's not something that, um, we're, it gets us super excited, but we also know that's, that's like part of just like a social gathering is just kind of like, we're going to, we're going to celebrate. And part of that is, you know, having a beer. And it's like, Mm. I don't want to limit that either because that's important to us too, is creating these memories. And I think, I think it's okay. So what about like after you finish a competition that you're really working hard for, not just like alcohol, but like, are you going to get a dozen donuts or yeah, like that's... when you step off the physique <laughs> stage, a uh, bodybuilder is that they just like go nuts for one day. Is that like what you're doing too? Yeah. I mean, I always say like, it's, it, it's fun and it, it's fun thinking about it, but like, so like we went on vacation <laughs> or earlier this year and I was like, I'm not going to worry about what I eat. Like, I'm so excited to eat at all the restaurants. We came back to California. I'm going to eat at all of our favorite restaurants. I'm not going to, like, worry about it. I'm just going to eat what I want. And, like, the second day, I'm dying. I'm like, oh, can I have my chicken and rice back, please? And it's, like, fun to think about. Yeah, I want to eat a Dungeons and Donuts. But, like, the way it makes you feel is so terrible. So, yeah. I, I, after competition, I definitely treat myself to, like, whatever. If I've been wanting, you know, like this last competition, we got what is called a pizuki, and it's just a cookie in a pizza pan with ice cream on top. And wow. it is it pizza sized? Yeah. It's like personal pan pizza size. Oh, pizza. okay. Oh, yeah. I guess you could get the pizza size. We, we got like our like own mini ones. Yeah. Because we got a, a couple of them. We had yeah. to try all the flavors. Absolutely. <laughs> For science. So, yeah. Science. Yeah. <laughs> Research. Love it. All right. Oh, but yeah. We would, I think one of the funny things we would, um, if Nicole's picking me up from work and on the way home, there was always this Taco Bell that we would drive past and i'd look at him like oh taco bell and she's like yes and then like we'd never go but i'm like one day and we we pass it by the next time like one day one and it's day. like but again it's like the thought of taco bell was way more exciting to us than just like actually, actually knowing it. that taco bell was going to destroy us if we even <laughs> attempted <laughs> Oh, interesting so, yeah the anticipation is like way better than the yeah. actual experience yeah and we joke i think it's like that you you know what it means if you're eating taco bell and that means like for us that would mean we have nothing on the agenda coming up this is our chance to kind of relax because we wouldn't be eating this unless we knew we had nothing we, we can clear our schedule tomorrow 
You yeah, have an AMRAP thing. toilet tomorrow. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. It's like, we're going to have to just cancel everything. Um, but like, I mean, that's, we say that with like donuts or stuff like that too. It's like, mm. you know, the, the idea of it just means like the, the scenario would be, we don't have anything planned. And that's, that's why we like the idea of it more so than actually doing it. Yeah. Solid. <laughs> well, thanks so much for chatting with us. This was awesome. For sure. I hope. Uh, yeah, thank you guys. I hope we didn't talk your ears off too bad. <laughs> that's the point. That's what we want. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole point. <laughs> <laughs> so where can the Fitheads go find you all online? Um, our Instagram probably is the best. My Instagram is Nicole E. Burke. All one word, Nicole Ebert. And uh, you're better off just finding me through her. But <laughs> I do have an Instagram. And it's like one post every six months. It's kind of where we, we get to. Unless I find an interesting bug. And I'll put that on my story. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, at MW underscore Burke. There it is. MW underscore Burke. Um, yeah, you won't find much sick content there. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we do a lot with sugar wide too so if they're on sugar wide or but they i do answer on instagram a lot so if anyone wants to dm or have questions about anything like i do respond to it i just don't post a lot there sweet Nicole i hit you up every day <laughs> way more cool her stuff is way better so cool, cool. all right awesome i mean good luck with your afternoon and or evening session Oh, thanks. It's rest day. <laughs> uh, of course, that's when you fit us in, I guess. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, thank you to the Fit Heads. And if you have a chance, please rate and review because that makes a big difference for the podcast. And we'll see you next week.